So, hello, it's me again. Hey guys, this is a Thursday, and uh, so like, here's there's another lesson in this notebook that I'm going to do um, that I did a while back. Uh, I think it was on a live for Living Recovery when all this crazy started, but we're going to go over it. Um, I might have a few other things that I might want to add uh, in the midst of all this, but so uh, the name of the lesson is called Truths to Remember, and, uh, and so I'm just going to read it. So I believe that in some situations where conflict arises or where events in life can go from peaceful to uncertain, we as disciples of Christ tend to let our emotions or our doubts overwhelm us and we tend to forget, number one, and these are two truths, Number one, who God is, and two, who we are in Christ. So I wrote down two key truths uh, for us to remember and to reflect on continually before conflict and or uncertainty happens so that we may be grounded firmly in truth. This way we can discern truth from lies so that we can take a breath and say a prayer and lay our worries, pains, doubts before the Lord instead of letting these worries, pains, and doubts rule our body and mind. I want to say at the beginning of this that, you know, we as humans, we all have emotions, right? We have emotions, and um, there's nothing wrong with these emotions. Uh, you know, God has created us with emotions and certain characteristics and things of that nature. But the fact of the matter is, is that if I'm angry and I act out in an unholy, unrighteous way in that anger, that's the problem. So if I'm, you know, if, if I'm depressed and I act out in that depression, it, it's just, it's things of that nature. It's the way that I react within the emotions that I'm having. Um, it's okay to be angry. You know, it's okay to be upset, you know. It's okay uh, to have doubts, but, you know, all of our doubts we need to cast before the Lord. Um, our anger, uh, we need to be able to react with us having anger, uh, not, not in a way that's ungodly uh, or unrighteous, but uh, that we might come to a resolution in any type of conflict that we're having. So I just want to put that uh, disclaimer out. Okay, there's, here's, a, here's another part, another disclaimer uh, to this lesson. There are multiple truths revealed to us through God's Word, considering that God's Word holds all truth. So I picked some key truths that I have personally failed to recognize when conflict or uncertain situations have arose in my life. I feel this is very suiting considering that we who come from a background of addiction and we who are involved in recovery in the recovery atmosphere stand on the undying mission statement to share our experience, hope, and strength. So that's what I'm trying to do with you guys is share some experience, hope, and strength. Okay. So and I've got some key verses. Psalm 119, uh, verse 68. You are good and do good. Teach me your statutes. And the psalmist in that particular psalm is talking specifically uh, to God, Yahweh. Okay, 36.7. How precious is your uh, steadfast love, O God. The children of mankind take refuge in the shadow of your wings. Um, psalm 34, verse 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in Him. Uh, Matthew chapter 7, verse 11. If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father, who is in heaven, give good things to those who ask Him? This is the first key truth, guys, is that, uh, that God is good. God's goodness is isn't limited to our emotions, our feelings, regardless of how we feel, God is still good. God's goodness is not limited to our circumstances or bad past experience or bad choices, okay? Uh, God can take a bent stick and strike a straight blow. 
This key truth is important to remember because sometimes when life happens, we tend to lose sight of God's goodness. And when this happens, we tend to play God when we think the true God is lacking in His character. This is important. I mean, we try to make up for what we think God is lacking in character at times. We try to take the control back. We try to, well, you know, what's the point in me uh, walking it out at this point in time? Things are not going the way that they should go or the way that I deem that they should go. So, obviously, you know, God is not... Uh, God is not being good to me for a certain reason. Uh, or, or, But, you know, I want to say that we have an invali uh, invaluable, well, we have a fallible sense of what goodness is. We have a fallible sense of what goodness actually looks like. I mean, God is the essence of everything that is good. He is 100% good, okay? Um, I, we, in our fallible minds, we can't even comprehend completely, 100%, the goodness of God. God is just in every decision that He makes. Um, but, we as humans, we tend to say that God's unjust. We tend to say that God isn't good. Um, if God was good, why is there evil? Things of that nature. And then I just want to say that, you know, if you do struggle with that, Get in the Bible and read. Read and see. See uh, see that God chose a people in Israel in the Old Testament. He chose them um, despite their sin, right? Despite them sinning against a holy God, He chose them and set them apart, okay? So, let's read on. Uh, this playing God can take many faces, uh, one being relapse, so, you know, things aren't going my way, things aren't uh, happening the way that I think they should, I'm just going to go back to my comfort, uh, the using of narcotics, the using of drugs and substances, uh, I'm going to relapse, and you know what, I'm going to be justified in doing it, because, you know, God wasn't looking out for me, so why would I continue to walk in sobriety, um, and that, that's just the truth. Isn't that true, though? If we think God lacks in character, don't we try to make up for His deficiencies by getting what we think we want? God gives every good gift, guys. Um, sometimes what we think that we want is not necessarily what we need. God is going to give us every good thing. Um, there's nothing happening in your life. I don't care if it's... In, this is actually a quote from John Piper... Uh, care if it's cancer, bad experience, in the path of obedience to God's word, nothing is meaningless. God is doing something with that. God is using that for his glory. In the midst of that, conforming you to the image of Christ, God is using that situation to glorify himself. Because he says, hey, uh, you know, he draws you. You come to believe in Christ, and through you believing, God is glorified because God is setting you apart uh, for His purposes. Um, because He loves you, you know. Uh, God doesn't love us because we're valuable. We're valuable because God loves us. Um, so, alright, so, but when we, when we stand, when we can stand firm in this key truth of God's goodness... We don't doubt his character. We might not understand what's going on or why this is happening, but we as Christ followers can stand firm in the promise of Romans 8.28. And I know that all things work together for good to those who love God and to them who are called according to his purpose. In the path of obedience, trusting in Christ. Um, so, this brings me to the next key truth in uh our identity in Christ. This is something I struggle with, especially when conflict arises, because at times I try to jump in the flesh and and cut loose. But that's not who I am. Um, and guys and gals, that's not who you are either in Christ. And I want to emphasize that. In Christ, that is not who you are. Uh, you are a saint in Christ. You are covered with his righteousness. Um, you are declared holy, chosen, dearly loved 
child of the Most High God, right? Uh, there is still a battle waging, uh, but we fight from a place and a position of victory. So there's still a battle. Um, I want to talk about, you know, we're justified when we come to Christ, and then we're being sanctified. And then there's temptation that arises at, at, at times. And, you know, uh, there's a battle waging. There is a battle, you know, the, the, the devil, he, he's, uh, he's roaming around like a lion seeking who he can devour, right? Um, that's why we need to stay grounded in the truth of God's word so we can discern the lies from truth, right? Uh, continue to walk it out so that we, uh, empowered by the Holy Spirit, uh, can test everything and we can turn. We can run from that temptation and run to God. Um, so, so the next time conflict arises or you get down on yourself because you feel like you can't get over this mountain and you keep falling, remember who you are in Christ. And here's some verses. In Christ, we are children of God. That's John chapter 1 verse 12. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 5. We have been adopted. We are adopted. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. We are united with Christ. Okay? Um, Romans 6, 6. We are no longer slaves to sin. You are not a slave to that sin anymore. You've been redeemed of that. Um, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, verse 27. You are a member of the body of Christ. You have... You are a member of the body of Christ. You are in fellowship with not just one person, but in with with multiple people that can speak into your life. You need to reach out, um, reach out and talk to them about what's going on with you. You know, if there's some kind of uh, struggle that you're having, reach out so that you can hear experience from men and women that's come before you that can speak into your life and give you wisdom. Right. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. You are chosen, royal, holy, and special. Romans 5, 9. We have been justified by Christ. I want to tell you something. That's one of the biggest deceptions. What, what are the three Ds? Deception, discouragement, and distraction. That's what the enemy uses to try to get you off track. Hey, I want to tell you something. There is a race. Paul talks about it. Paul talks about finished the race. He, well, he, he finished the race. He fought the good fight. We need to follow in those who have come before us. We need to seek Christ and what Christ has said is true, right? We need to dig into the Word and see what Christ says about uh, who we are uh, in Him, you know, uh, what He's redeemed us from. Um, we need to cling to the words of Christ, okay? And let that transform our hearts, right? Um, to the working of the Holy Spirit. Uh, so the next time, look, see, this is the thing. Is, man, when I'm in the car and I'm driving, I want to be a Christian on the highway, right? I do want to be a Christian on the highway. But when people are cutting me off and not using their blinker and stuff... You know, lately I've been a lot better about it, but sometimes, man, I get selfish when I'm driving out on the road, right? Man, I'm cutting people off and, and things of that nature. Man, I want to be a Christian when I get in the car. <laughs> but, man, we're warring against the flesh, right? Um, our flesh wants to tell us something contrary to what the Word of God specifically tells us in the way that we need to carry ourselves. Um, this goes back to a previous lesson, you know. If, we're, if we, as Christians, are proclaiming Christ, we are bearing His name. And when we act contrary to what the Word of God says in that moment, it's, it's basically like we are uh, defaming the name of Christ. Okay? So think about that, guys. I hope that y'all have a good day. I hope this helped you. Um, remember, God is always good, and it is not uh, dependent on our feelings or emotions. Read the Word and dig in. Thanks, guys.